Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Texas serves as a basis for this morning's meditation comes to us from the gospel lesson from John chapter 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So far the words of our text for us this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our only Savior from sin, death, and the power of the devil, dear friends, in his name. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today is a special day. It's not just a beautiful day, but later this morning, we will confirm three members here at Mount Olive. Three members who were baptized a long time ago who heard God's word, was impressed upon them as we look at the first lesson for today. See, there's water, shouldn't I be baptized? Their parents understanding and knowing their role as parents to bring their little ones to the waters of baptism. Today, a reminder to them of what they were given, the promises of God for all time not just for a day or for a week or for a month, but our Lord's promise to be with them every step of the way. Though this text is a wonderful text for them, it's a wonderful text for us as well. For this day isn't just for them, but for all of us. For all of us who have been confirmed in the faith who continually need to be reminded of who God is and what he has done. That he calls upon us and convicts us because we're not perfect people. Because we need what he has to offer. Full forgiveness of sins, strength for our life today, waiting for the promise of that which is yet to come. It's a good day to talk about vine and branches. It's spring. Spring has sprung and many of us are prepping for it. You've mowed some lawns probably already, those of you who have lawns to mow. Laurel and I and her mother were able to go to St. Louis this past week. As many of you know, what an exciting time for us, as Andrew received his first call into the ministry, coming back to Wisconsin, <laughs> lots of prayers for that. And yet, as we drove to St. Louis and came back, field after field after field was being prepped, was being planted. It's spring. It's a time for us to prepare for that which is to grow. A good time for us to look into our gardens, hoping for a crop. If we have potatoes and carrots and other vegetables, or beautiful flowers, if we take the time and work on a flower garden. For these crops to grow, for these flowers to bloom beautifully, they're going to need some sun, some rain, and some care. Without these things, they won't grow. And if they start to grow and things dry up, they'll wither and die. As we prepare this spring once again to see the beautiful colors of God's creation, it is a good day for us to look at John chapter 15. Christ as the vine, we as the branches. We as God's children created to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And I know many of you have heard this text Maybe a hundred times before, God's word speaks to us about how we can bear fruit. Simply put, stay connected to the vine. 
stay connected to the vine who is our Savior, Jesus. If Jesus is your Lord, if Jesus is my Lord and Savior, fruit will appear. That is God's promise. The Holy Spirit working in you and in me, churning us, moving us to bear fruit, fruit that will last. I've seen it in our three confirmands, how God has used them and taught them and built them up in his love. And as your pastor, it's been a joy to see many of you grow and bear fruit that maybe you don't even know. But I see it as it touches the lives of those in this place and throughout our community. Galatians chapter 2 talks about the fruits of of the Spirit. A few of these are joy and peace and patience and kindness, self-control. There are many, many more. Bearing fruit also means God giving you the ability to resist the temptations and sins that, as we know from another lesson of Paul, that creep right up beside us and try to entangle us And pull us away from the love of God that we have in Christ Jesus. God has commended us and commanded us as he works in you and in me. And he reminds us again this day where that strength comes from. In an individualistic world that likes to shine the light inward and say, what have I done? John chapter 15 is very clear where our strength comes from. Not from within, in terms of our own selves, but God at work in us. The second part of this text reminds us of that as Jesus speaks very clearly To the disciples then and to us who follow him this day, apart from me, you can do nothing. Again, that's hard for us in this world because we like the glory. We like the thank yous and the well dones. And yet our response, as it is many times again that I've seen, is this. To God be the glory. To God be the glory that he has taken this pile of dead branches filled with sin and recreated it into a beautiful living tree. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You do not abide, O Lord, in me if I am apart from you. Indeed, I am like a dead branch without you, one that is destined to be thrown into the fire. As we look at the growth and the bursting forth of flowers and plants, as we see creation revived once again in the spring, we also see some other things. Spring can be a messy time as well. I know there were a few bushes and plants that I didn't chop down, didn't cut up. And I did that just a couple weeks ago, and I gathered it all together and took it to the dump. And for those of you who have done that, like me, it's not a pretty place. Because what you see is dried up, dead things. That's what we are apart from Christ. Dried up dead things. And yet, thanks be to God that he didn't clear us out and leave us dead, but he sent us Jesus so that we could have life and have life everlasting. He's taken us who know not God or what he has done for us He's taken a messy lot, (laughs) our bodies, our minds, our spirits. He's cleaned us up 
and made us new in Jesus. The Holy Spirit leads us to have the desire to want to bear fruit, to be strong and to be vibrant branches. Again, how do we do that? Stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to Christ. To understand what we are without Him and to rejoice in that which we have in Him. What the cross means. To remember the power of Jesus as again He proclaims those words, it is finished for you and for me. Those sins that separate you from him, no longer separating us. Because Christ has taken them to the cross, to the empty tomb. And reminds us what we have in him. 1 John is a beautiful book about love. What love our God has for you and for me. His hope is this, stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to Jesus as you continue to hear his word. Stay connected to Jesus as you continue to feast upon him, the power of God at work in his body and in his blood. Continue to feed off these benefits of Jesus. Last week in Bible class, I said some words about what happens, unfortunately, all too often to our confirmands. The data tells us that 75% of confirmands, by the time they graduate high school, will no longer be active in a church. As it is hard for you to swallow, it's extremely hard for me to swallow. Because now for 12 years, I've had the joy and the privilege of proclaiming the wonderful gifts of God to share with them their life and their families. Yeah, the families too. And I've listened to them time and time and time again speak about their Lord and what they believe and what He teaches. And once again, I'm excited to see three people who have professed that faith often to me. And yet the data tells me that 75% of children throughout our synod and throughout Christendom will no longer be going to church once they enter into college. And that troubles me. As I will tell them, as I will tell their families, as I tell you, continue to pray. Continue to be led by the Spirit of God to tell them. You don't stop being parents when they get confirmed. You continue to be a wonderful, positive influence. All of us, not just parents, as they learn and as they grow and as they enter high school and as they enter their college years. Remind them of how powerful God's word is and how it is the center of our lives. When it is, you'll see the difference in their lives as they grow, as they speak, as they live, how they spend their money, how they live their lives, where they go. purpose given to them by Christ himself, to live selflessly because Christ has given up himself so that we might live. There's a different purpose for you and for me knowing Jesus and how he calls us to live. Simply put, as you've heard me say before, it's not about you and it's not about me. What I can gather, what I can earn but it's all about Jesus and what he has done and how he works in all those aspects and phases of our lives. As you know, I know. It's not easy. 
It's not easy to live as a follower of Jesus in the midst of this time or in any time. And yet, God's love and His forgiveness is always available, even when we fall short. My prayer for you, and it will be for our three later this morning, is that our lives would be a thank offering to our great God for all that he has done. That we would, in truth and in sincerity, try whatever we can do, the Spirit leading us all the way to honor him. That his life gifted to us will always be in season. Messy at times as it will. And that we would be. Because Christ says it. And he leads us. Would be faithful branches. Connected to the vine that is our life source. Spring is sprung. And it's a joy to see it bursting forth in so many ways. Likewise, may we not think our days are numbered in such that God no longer needs me or wants to use me to bear fruit. Oh, how he does want to continue to use you, the branches connected to the vine, to share and to live him. May that be all of our prayers, that it'll continue to be the center as we stay connected to Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting.